I always love that about Final Fantasy VI. Like, there's always, like, these, like, tricks that, for some reason, they just forgot to make certain enemies immune to, like, certain statuses. So, you can just do things like that and kind of break what the game wants you to do. The weird thing is that presenter is in no way a difficult boss, either. Like, at this point in the game, there's no excuse for you to ever lose another battle. Uh. What? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> is there a noodle incident in the future, perhaps? I don't think it's in... I don't remember. I, I'm pretty certain I get another game over at some point in the future. Uh. Against the final boss, plus ruining the LP. Actually, the final boss is probably the easiest boss in the entire game. That, that's getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Daryl, why is he? Why is he confused? Eh? Setsu's right there. He can tell you what's going. Also, on. oh, we're fighting Selty. Also, there's just a boss for some reason. And now I'm trying to cheat oh, yeah. the system here, and trying to get. But no, the game doesn't want me to do it. <laughs> Sometimes the game just like rigs it so you can't get like a high get a higher uh, slot. So if the game doesn't want you to get airship, it's not gonna let you get airship. No matter how. You don't accidentally get the all lucky sevens or whatever it is that kills you instantly, do you? I have not good enough for Setsu to do anything like that. Okay. I've never done that either. So you're gonna see lots of lagomorphs in this battle. So because I am crappy result so Set Setsu and he. I'm sorry, Blue, he goes out of the Proto until I get the fixed dice, but then he stays in the Proto for the rest of the LP, basically. So you get the fixed dice right now, like, right after this boss. I get him, I get it after when I get Mog, because I don't want to go into Kafka's Tower until I get the Moogle Charm, but that's getting ahead of ourselves, because that's later in this video, or maybe it's the next video, I don't remember. Nah. Yeah. People need a reason to watch, yeah. they just know what's gonna happen anyway, they'll just skip this entire thing. Okay. Not that, probably everyone who sees these videos has already played this game, and... Who hasn't played this game? Uh, my mom. President Obama? I don't know about that. Napoleon didn't play this game. Also, somehow I get three bars, and it gives me a random expert. Unfortunately, it gives me Phantom, and it gives me Vanish against an enemy that only uses magic. Hmm. Yeah. The game doesn't like it. No, it doesn't, so I just cancel it. You know, it seems that every time I get anything good with Setzer, it never seems to work out for me. That's the first time I've ever gotten three bars with Setzer, I think. I actually once with Setzer got uh, Crusades, or oh, whatever yeah. it is I'm so in this sorry. version. And that kills you instantly. I'm really sorry. It kills everything on the screen. I'm really sorry. Once again, the game did not want me to get airship, even though... I tried to cheat it again. But if you pause the game, you can, like... Kind of like, like exploit. Yeah, exploit. But it it was not so. It was not to be. Or maybe you just suck that badly. It could be that. <laughs> Tragedies upon tragedy. Still trying. No. You know, and then after that, I get three bars again for the second time. Ever. I don't know what was with this boss. And. <laughs> Unfortunately, hmm. Three Bars continues to be completely worthless because it gives me Shiva, which heals the boss. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh well. Ah, oh, you poor bastard. I mean, Sets is trying his best. You're just not good enough to use Sets, sir. He, know he sees your personal limitations yeah. and your deep character flaws. I mean, Lagomorth's getting on a screen time this, this episode, so. If I was good with Setzer, maybe this battle could have been over, like, ten minutes ago. Oh well. Yeah, D Dolahan is, like, here to stay for some reason. He's, he's taking a sweet time to go away. I'm sure you'll get him eventually. I believe in you. Okay. How do you know the rest of the video just isn't Dolahan? I have a feeling. <laughs> okay. Let's see if you're right. Um, meantime, I think I've been getting a few blitzes this this battle. I haven't missed one yet. Hmm. Getting better. You're growing up. Yes. I'm proud of you. I can learn how to press simple commands on the keyboard. 
Well, think about it this way. You could be playing, like, an action game on your emulator, trying to use the friggin' keyboard. That is terrible. Try playing Super Star Wars using your arrow keys. Just try play playing Super Star Wars. I'm not sure if that's possible with a controller, either. I managed to get to the Death Star in that game, and that was pretty much it. Here's... I was very proud of myself as a kid for doing that. Here's one of those times in Final Fantasy VI where the game doesn't tell you you have control, and then I just don't realize for a few, few seconds that I have control, and then I just kind of sit there. Huh. It was a moment of reflection, yeah. where the party decided to pay their respects to Daryl, obviously. Yes. Oh, is this that great moment where you're going down the stairs and you see all the images from Setzer's past? Yeah. Oh, what's the timestamp, by the way? Uh, 1841, 1842, 1843. Four. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm there. I'm at 1904. Yeah. Alright. This is kind of a confusing scene when you think about it. I don't know. Maybe I don't. Maybe I shouldn't be like, shouldn't be trying to think of trying to think about it too hard. But it just doesn't make very much sense. Is Setsu telling you this, or is it just like he has like this projector set up as you walk down the stairs? I thought it was actually one of the more clever and artistic moves in this game. It's one of their ways of like showing backstory, but without having to use like awkward transitions or whatever, and actually you know incorporating these cutscenes some way into the movement. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess the whole, like, moving during cutscenes thing wasn't a thing until much later. In, in games. I don't know, it seems cool to me. It's kind of like a ride and you're walking down. <laughs> you're waiting to get on the airship ride, you're going to see these little scenes along the line. Maybe I just have a short attention span, but whenever the game gives me control during a cutscene, I just start moving around. Up and down, I would like... <laughs> like, I had to force myself to stop, like, moving up and down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Where you just spontaneously spam the A button. <laughs> Shut the hell up, I want to get back to killing things, damn you. <laughs> Screw your flashbacks, I'm having too much fun climbing up and down these stairs. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like them stairs. <laughs> I, I... It, it reminds me of, um... Like, those stairs in the opera house that you have to walk down sideways, and for some reason we made this long, we had this long talk about the stairs. And we did. This is where Hexid would try and shoehorn in a reference to Homestuck about stairs, so I'll do that for him. Oh no. I don't understand that reference at all, so you're going to have to elaborate more on the stairs. Or don't. Are, are there yeah, I think don't. Are there stairs in Homestuck, or is it just you wanted to make a reference to Homestuck, so you just put Homestuck and stairs in the same sentence? There are stairs, and one falls down them perpetually, but... That's not really relevant to this, but I thought that I'd mention it anyway. Hmm. Sometimes I feel like we live in an internal chaotic struggle between the forces of talking about Final Fantasy VI and talking about anything else. <laughs> it really is hard to stay on topic. I don't know, I once imagined myself as being one of those guys who, like, you know, during movie commentaries, directors and whatever, could stay on topic and talk about... Ah, oh, the brilliant angles right here and the pacing of the scene and how nice the music is. No, I'm actually the kind of person who talks about toasters. Yep. Well, Mr. Quest, if you were the director of Mr. Quest and you were doing director's commentary of Mr. Quest, I feel really bad for you. Oh, I I'm sure you could not get anybody to appear into director's commentary for that. <laughs> They'd be far too ashamed. <laughs> you, it would be like Joel Schumacher in his commentary for Batman and Robin where he actually apologizes. <laughs> <laughs> It's just two hours, or it's one, one and a half hours of just Joe Schumacher just saying I'm sorry over and over again in different inflections. And he, he concludes it with like, if you loved Batman forever, and really I don't, but he goes and says I'm sorry. I wish the guys who made this game would do director's commentary though. Yeah, it would be, actually be a good, good director's commentary, maybe. Or maybe it would just... Ooh, wait, who was the director of this again? Sakaguchi, probably. The guy... It was the guy who did 9 and 12. <laughs> is, I forget his name. Isn't it Sakaguchi? I mean, the person who directed 12 was, uh, Yasmat or whatever. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm now, sure Matsu we're going to get someone in the comments telling us who it is. No, no, no. Matsuno wrong. directed the uh, early part of it, but eventually he had to quit or he got sick or something happened. But no, the game was taken over by. Uh, we, I'll find it. I'll look I, it up on the wiki. One of them was Toriyama for Final Fantasy 12, I think. 
Uh, Toriyama! No, not Toriyama. I don't... No, Hiroyuki Ito. Toriyama had nothing to do with 12. Oh, Hiroyuki... Toriyama Thank is God. a piece of shit. He wouldn't have... He would go nowhere near that game. <laughs> He'd see that game and be like, Oh, why isn't this more like a movie? And we need time travel! And at the end, I think Ash should die of time poisoning. <laughs> because it turns out she's a Cirrus. And Cirruses die when time stuff changes. Are you getting me? This is so deep and awesome, guys. It's like cutting-edge storytelling. I have a chip oh. on my shoulder. I'm just hoping that um, uh, Lightning Returns is the last game. And for some reason, talking about this has made me think that maybe we should start a Yule equal you Ultimisha theory. <laughs> oh. We can, like, by tra Ark. Like, transit of. Ark was the Yule who enjoyed Homestar Runner. <laughs> or what? Can... Is it Homestack or something? There's, like, a. I am the Yule who loved Final Fantasy XII. Skate was the Yule who could not do blitzes. <laughs> And in the end, we all die in various tragic ways. By tragic, I mean kind of comical. Time poison. And so this bird goes over to Zozo, a place we are not going to this episode because there's Cyan, and I'm not going to get him this episode because Cyan. The Cyan like the what? Thunder Dragon. He's, Cyan is like the best ever character. Cyan's the, Cyan's the best character in terms of story in this game, but I'm not going to go get him because Mog is better when it comes to gameplay, and Mog is easier to get anyway. Don't He's the best mustache. Star. So what are you doing? Are you getting Terra now? Yes, I am getting Terra. Huh. You should have gotten the bum rush for it. Uh, you know, on hindsight, I, re I realized that I sh that's what I should have done. But I get bum rush, bum rush after. So, I'm spoiling the video, spoiling things, but... Yeah. Okay. Fun Bob is not very hard, anyway, when you actually have a full party. You're not gonna take Mommy Terra away, are you? Perhaps. You could just little. let her live out her dream as being like a motherly type figure. All these children, there's like 13 and a half kids here. <laughs> and and you're it's gonna the go post apocalypse. Take away <laughs> it must be, yeah, it's gotta be really hard to babysit all those kids after the apocalypse. There's no TV, there's no Game Boys, there's probably aren't even like boards of, you know, tic tac toe or uh, Connect 4 or anything. What the hell are you gonna do with all of them? The only game console is the Virtual Boy. Oh no. Oh no. They'll be blind within a month. They have to play Mario Tennis forever. A fate worse than death. Ironically, the last game console on the Earth was the uh, Atari Jaguar CD. <laughs> Everyone's favorite game console. <laughs> okay. Oh, she's having a baby. Okay, I wonder if there's actually anyone who's ever had a Jaguar. I mean, uh, is yeah. there anything... Like, I, I, from what I heard, there's not, actually nothing on that system, ever, and it was a terrible piece of crap. Uh... Yeah, there were really... I can't think of any good games on that. There were definitely no RPGs. I'm pretty sure there was, there was no anything on the Jaguar. No, there were a few games. I mean, you can watch the Angry Video Game Nerd episode, and, and you know, you'll see some stuff. Where did you learn to fly? Where did you learn to fly? That's what the games are like. Okay. They re they repeat things in a vaguely um robotic voice, yeah. In some so it's actually it's actually terrifying. <laughs> Much scarier than this big fat humbaba humbaba guy. Humbaba. 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 